When we think of religious buildings in D&D, we sometimes think of them as a single building, as one location. And I think that's wrong. I think they should be more of a complex. And there's very good reasons for that. Because, you know, we come from, you know, most of us, we live, we live in countries now that are, uh, have a single religion. And usually that religion is involved in some way with the state. So they're state-supported religions. But in D&D, &D, the worlds often have dozens of religions. And because of that, those religions need to be businesses. They need to be self-sustaining because they don't have state support. And quite often we just sort of brush that off as, well, it's a temple, it survives on donations. But what encourages people to donate to a temple? So one of the first things a religion will set up is a school. Schools are great for religions because, uh, mostly because they, they're very cost effective to run. You just need a, a tatty old building as I've got here. And they have, um, they, they survive you know, on, on very few resources, just a few books, which often they can get donated. But because the church is then seen to be doing good in the community, people are then more likely to donate to the church. And another advantage, of course, is that you get the children young and can influence them with your religion. And in this temple school, not every student is a human. Now, the eagle-eyed among you may well notice that there's some old runes on the floor from whatever former purpose this building used to serve. On the back wall, a door has been bricked over and the walls are very dirty and very rough. Maybe they'll get the community to all come round and help them do the place up, you know, once they've fixed the roof. In D&D, &D, one of the first things that uh, players think of when they think of temples is priests in order to get healed. What about the local populace, though? They must be thinking the same thing. And one of the best business ideas for a struggling temple might be to take on the infirm. And in this temple, that's no different. The catch is, every now and then they retire their old inmates when the families stop visiting them once they've uh, helped themselves to as much of the family's money as they possibly can. And the old inmates are retired. The straw bale there is for cleaning the walls and floors up afterward. In this temple, every day before work starts and also after work, a bugleer calls the local populace to prayer. And as we can see in the temple itself, there's currently a celebration going on. Water is often a part of religious iconography or religious myths. Uh, ever since the oldest writings that we've discovered in our own world, uh, come from the Sumerian tablets, uh, make a reference to a tale called Gilgamesh. And that's found its way into just about every religion since, such as the tale of Noah, for example. In this case, the ceremony is about the water and the flame that rises from it. And it's got the local revellers into quite a frenzy. I'll notice off to the side though, that's where the rich people sit. They make the largest donations to the temple. You'll notice that this particular religion is tied into the lions here who give the water. But if we go through the door at the back of the temple, we see that there's something else going on. Statues to long-forgotten deities outlawed in the local city. And in pride of place, an effigy of a ram's head. How blasphemous! Just visible to the patrons as they glance over on their way into the temple, is this old burned-out building, casting the illusion of poverty. The priests will claim that this is because of a lightning strike and they can't afford to fix it. But uh, I suspect it might have been deliberate. The priests are using it to grow some mushrooms that they claim are used in their healing potions. And they also seem to do some other business in there. And your living expenses are all covered for you. All the excess wealth has to go on something. It may as well be on lifestyle. This kitchen is well equipped and the priests here, as you can see, aren't having to worry about any form of kosher diet in their particular faith. There's a ranking system amongst the initiates here. 
And notice the nicest chairs at one end, and that leads down to a lowly stool at the far end for the newest recruit. As we go into the west wing of the cloister, we get to the dormitories and we see the same pattern repeated here. Three to a room, and then two to a room, and then much nicer room at the far end. And these priests get their own little cupboard, along with some lock boxes, and uh, at least one of them's observing their faith and reading up on the tenets. People of religion obviously have to be modest, so using communal baths is out of the question. It's therefore entirely prudent that they should have their own baths for keeping clean and such. As we can see, we have an expensive array of salts here and other chemicals to put into the water. If you've ever a need to visit the administrator, the chief amongst all of the priests, you'll be coming in through the grand entranceway. But just to keep things a little modest, he only has a curtain for a door. Of course, the real reason it's a curtain is he likes to hear you coming. You see, in the back of the storeroom is a lever. And that opens this secret passage behind his official office. And that gets you into this building that, well, the locals don't really know what it is. There isn't a door visible to the outside. And they assume the door's around the back somewhere, and well, nobody's ever really questioned it. But this is the real office of the head of the order. And you see, he does do some work. There he is, reading a very expensive tome. And the papers there, if you were to read them, you'd probably find they're about the financial remunerations and business of the temple. Business that's currently being conducted with the Thieves' Guild. That's the master of the Thieves' Guild there. Although, you could argue that the master of the Thieves' Guild is really the head priest. There's quite an arrangement there. The wolf is actually a shape-shifting creature that the priest insists goes along with the guildmaster of the Thieves' Guild, just to make sure the priest is getting his correct cut. You see, this is a man in all sorts of power circles of the city. And yes, that is a well-stocked bar in his personal office. So when we look over the compound itself, you might notice that there isn't really enough beds for all of the priests. Well, that's because those senior in the order get their own house. You can guess which one the head priest is in. Behind the houses is a communal green space that's currently home to a, well, a bathroom of sorts. Now, this space wasn't always used for this purpose. And once, this is where the platforms used to be for hanging people. But local ordinances prevent that from being allowed now. Although this particular temple is keen to resume the practice. <laughs> Just a little side note. Um, I got that idea from my old mortgage clause, from my old house. Um, it, there was genuinely a clause in my mortgage that said, uh, when, and I do mean when, not if, the church resumes hanging people, uh, I would have to board up the back of my house because that's where they used to do it, and uh, I wasn't allowed to watch for free. <laughs> yep, that's true. Anyway, I'm keen to continue doing these Encounter Ideas videos. Uh, and in this one, I haven't gone too much into the people in the environment, but I'm, I'm quite happy to do that if that's what you guys want to hear. Let me know. But also, uh, if you have any ideas for uh, particular areas or, or terrains, uh, buildings and so forth that you would like ideas on, um, just say so in the comments and I'll see if I can do a video. I may not have the terrain suitable for it, um, but if I do, if I can put one together, if I've got something to add, then uh, I'd be delighted to hear uh, what, what, um, what environments uh, you would like some inspiration from, from a fellow GM. Um, so uh, let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do in future videos. Bye for now.